and uh, I claim it saves time and it's actually easier to do than these. I'll try to do it again. But basically, there are multiple packages of surface mount technology. And uh, usually these small ones on top and about that to do these around. Until I'm, while I'm showing. So the ones on top are usually passive components. They are usually resistors, uh, capacitors, diodes maybe, that, that kind of stuff. And the one on the left, the 0402, is about the smallest one someone can do by hand. And as a reference, this is a 0402 resistor. It's pretty small. <laughs> That's a 0402 resistor. So it actually it's quite a bit smaller than the back. So now the two the two pad ones are fairly straightforward to solder. We'll, we'll show that in a bit. Um, the three by five on the second row that's usually a crystal package mm -hmm. um, like this. Usually th this uh, setup with four connections on the four sides on the four corners is usually a crystal oscillator something like that. Then we have a big surface mount diode next to it. The MSOF 10 is probably, of these here, is probably the hardest one to solder. And not because of the pins, but because of the thing in the middle, because of the, the ground pad. And the problem is the ground pad is really, I mean, in this, in this form, it's pretty much impossible to solder. Is that not a heat sink as well? It is a heat sink as well, but usually the way you do it is you would have a via, which essentially makes one of these, and it's still coated all the way through. So you make a via and you would have a hole in the middle and you would actually solder it from the other side. So you first do the pins, you turn it around, you put a little bit of this, which we'll talk about in a bit, and and then it yeah, and then the solder just flows and it wicks on on the whole thing. The SOP twenty three, a very common package in a lot of the um, this pitch is one of the common packages actually of components you get in various kits related to ham radio. The one underneath the SO08, that is probably 90% of the surface mount stuff you would find in any radio related kit online. Eight so pins. yeah the, the eight pins. Well and it could be multiple they're pins. Spaced too, pretty good. Right. This spacing in this size is pretty much what you would find. And there are you know more more uh, chips with more pins or if you have a an ADC with more more ADCs on one chip, there'll be more than the eight. Um, but basically, this is what most people would find in, say, uh, one of those. Uh, what an they ICOM call? radio or something of those. Well, on the radio, you could you could find a smaller one. I yeah. mean, if you buy one of these uh, new software-defined oh, okay. kits, like those things, or if you buy some other kit like a tuner or whatever you buy, and if it has surface mount, That's the if the designer had any mine, they'll probably use this the smallest. Right. Now the TQF P1, that is a very common package for a Arduino, uh, surface mount Arduino. So Arduino, you know, this is an Atmel CPU and this is also fairly straightforward to start up. The one on the bottom left, that's a big inductor package. Uh, again, fairly common if you're doing power supplies or switching anything. Really. And, um, Okay, and I, I believe I have a few of each of these packages to try. So the tricky part is, as you probably know, to bridge, not to bridge the pins. And it's actually really easy not to do it. The key is, one, to have this green stuff, and it doesn't have to be green, but this thing called solder mass. What this does is basically repels uh, solder. So if I try to leave a blob of solder on it anywhere, it's just not going to happen. See, it just doesn't stay. Impossible, pretty much. That's number one. Number two is this thing. And this is rosin flux. Rosin probably better than the other ones, I think. Uh, not the water-soluble ones. I like this one better. And what this does is two things. One, it cleans the surfaces 
if it has any oxidation. So it makes actually, it's good in general, even if you're doing through whole stuff, it cleans the surface, it makes a really good solder connection. And two, it also makes the solder flow really nicely. And the third thing is very fine solder. A lot of people have these, you know, chunks of solder that are like this thick. I mean, there's no way you can get a little bit of this <laughs> and not bridge these pins. It's impossible. So you need this, but the other feature of this uh, solder is not just it's thin, but inside it, it's a multi-core rosin flux solder. So it's actually inside it has a bunch of channels filled with this thing. So when you are soldering, it melts and it makes itself flow better and it also not stick to anything else and cleans. But usually you would add a little bit extra of this just to, you know, to make sure everything is good. And if you look at these boards, you know, that gunk that's on it, it's residue from the rosin flux. This is really easy to clean with like isopropyl alcohol or something like that. Is that the standard uh, tin and lead combination in there? Or this is a standard 4060S. Um, I recommend lead it. I'm not really that paranoid about lead. I mean, we're not eating this stuff, so <laughs> it's okay. But leaded solder is just so much better. It has lower melting point and it flows much better. And I, it, I believe it makes much better connections. Now there are uh, other combinations like three and four um, different metals in there. Um, for example, in the audio industry, a lot of times they use quad, what's called the quad eutectic solder. And the idea is when you combine four different metals, the melting point of the four combined is actually lower than each one of them individually. So the goal with, with most of these things is to heat it as little as possible because these are tiny, they can't really take that much heat, so if you overheat it, you kill it. And you know, leaded solder helps with that, but if you want to, you know, spend some more time, uh, more money, you can get even lower melting point than this and, you know, do it even faster. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, this is basically how it goes. Let me get something bigger to start with. And I'm just going to do a couple and then you guys can take turns. I think we don't have, oh yeah, so another thing. It's not necessary to have a very fine tip. Now, some people would think this is a very fine tip, but <laughs> this is actually a fine tip. Now it's a little dirty, but you know, this is a fine tip. And a pointed tip like this is actually worse than something like this, which is a chisel tip. A chisel tip allows you, now, since we talked about this property that when you put this on top of the solder mask and you know, the, the solder flows nicely, it basically, pulls it on top of the pad. So when you have a flat tip like this, you have more surface area. And again, you want to heat everything as fast as possible so that the solder flows nicely. And uh, if you have a pointed tip, you have a very small contact point. And while you can go, you know, for some of these, you can definitely go, you know, and do it pin by pin. That's really hard because, you know, hands are pretty shaky. We're actually not going to do this pin by pin. We're just going to go and do a strip like this, and that should pretty much be it. And uh, some people do it with a little bit, and basically when they do the strip, it's done. Some people do put a lot of solder, and when they go, they pretty much bridge them all, and then they clean them, which I'll show you that in a bit. They clean off some solder, they clean their tip, and they basically, you basically put your tip like this, you heat it up, and you pull to the side. You put it on top and you pull to the side, and that pulls away the solder from between the holes. Which way you do it? do that. I personally, whichever way it happens, <laughs> because sometimes you can't really guess how much you're putting, and sometimes you know there won't be the right amount of this, or you know something might have happened. You'll bridge something. You would use that technique actually fairly often to clean clean up some pins. So actually, since we have something here, let's and we're talking about it. See if we can do it. Now, if it's a big blob like this, you you have two options. Because this is a very big um, pitch between the two, you can use this thing. And this is solder braid. Some of you know. This thing basically pulls all the solder from whatever it touches into it. So to clean this without actually soldering it, you can just put it on top and just for a couple of seconds. 
present. And this is still a perfectly fine connection. Let's see. Okay. Maybe this if you want to look at it closer. Oh, we'll look at it. We're checking it out for quality. Go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, cleaning is pretty easy, but the other way to do it, in, on the finer... Hello, hello. And on the finer pitches, you uh, that becomes trickier because there's not much solder <laughs> on there. So if you don't hold it the right amount of time, you might actually pull all the solder in there. And uh, if you have a blob here, See, when everything is right, it's even hard to bridge. I mean, you really have to have <laughs> You really, really You have need a to piece have. of thick solder for the demo. Exactly. <laughs> no. No. There you go. So, <laughs> when there is a bridge in the smaller pins, we usually do this. If you can, you have to clean the tip a lot. You don't want anything on it. And you basically go in and you pull out. Clean it up, and go in, and pull it up. See, and it's, um, you probably can't see, but it's getting smaller. And on the third time, done. And there's still plenty of solder there, because I'm pulling just a little bit every time I pull. And uh, the connection is perfect. It looks the same as when it's also. <laughs> right, so, you know, some people even prefer to do it even this way, because it leaves some more, so the connection is better. and. If you look at this chip closer, you'll see the left two pins on the bottom almost look like there is no solder on them. And on the ones on the right, it, there's a nice slope with basically there's a nice blob of solder there. And some people think you want a lot of this, but in reality, you need very little bit just on the bottom to make that connection. You don't need a big blob there. Definitely not required. If it's there, it's there. That's fine. <coughs> so. The order of things. Something bigger, 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 bigger. Okay. That's kind of yellowish. Well, that's because of the uh, the flux. If you clean it after you put it in some um, isopropyl, you just brush it a little bit, and it becomes really nice and shiny, like it came out of the factory. So here is the diode. Okay. Because it's the biggest one, I'm going to show you that one. SMC? Yes, that's SMC. And that, that again is a fairly common diode package if you need a big, beefy power diode on a surface mount. So what we're going to do is, again, there are two ways. We put a little of this liquid, doesn't really need much. Put a little bit of this. And the two ways to do it is, you can pre-coat the connection with a little bit of solder. You can go in there with, you know, just a dot to coat it with solder because right now there's nothing on it. Or you can just put it on there. And in this case, this actually has a direction. There is a white stripe on the bottom. You know, and that's the usual diode um, <coughs> mark. And the chip also has a white, well, a gray bar on one side. So we want to line those. You know, in this case, it doesn't matter, but usually it does. And the one of the other benefits of putting so, um, flux is that it has some viscosity. It's not really water; it's a little bit stickier. And when you put that stuff on, the chip actually stays pretty well. You don't really need to worry too much. You still want to uh, press it with a little bit when you do the first pin, but it's not really that bad. And I actually don't have. Uh, the other very useful tool is a very fine tip uh, uh, tweezers. And I forgot mine, but I'll show you that it's done. It can be done without it. And they really help with these small packages. You know, with this resistor over here, for example. But, um, so what we do is we clean the tip. We always want to clean the tip so it's nice and shiny. If you put a blob on it, that's one way you put a blob on it and while you're holding it and usually you don't want to hold it with a finger but this time I'm going to do it because it's a fairly big package because if you hold it with a finger it becomes hot very quickly and it burns a lot so you just do this that's it that's all it took that's really and actually I have enough here left there you go 
that's a perfectly soldered diode. That's how long it takes. I do something. So one of them has more because on the other one I didn't put any extra solder. But you don't really need extra. You know, it's just a little bit. You touch it and that's it. And um, so yes, if you're doing small packages that are sensitive to to uh, heat, usually you would read, you know, what they have a recommended uh, rate of heat. So they would say if you're soldering it, do it at a given temperature for maximum of let's say five seconds. And when you're doing this, you don't want to do five seconds on one side, flip it and do another five seconds on the other side and then flip it and oh, let me reflow this one and then let me reflow it again, doesn't look right. You keep doing it. You usually want to find something metal after you solder it and you just go there and just touch it like this for a few for a few seconds. Are the surface mounts any more sensitive than the uh, non-surface mount? Or not? They are actually, they should be a little bit better actually, but they're usually the same. The, the reason is they're small, right? So they, they don't have a lot of, they can hold a lot of thermal energy. So you can burn them really quickly. A bigger thing obviously is going to take, for example, if you're doing this this inductor here, they're usually pretty tall. Right. That, that one you can keep heating. Right. So what, is your, just, what is your temperature setting typically for these sizes? Right the now, yeah. well, right now it's set at, 700, uh, 700 Fahrenheit, but I'm going to actually do it, put it down to 600. So between 6 and 650, when I'm doing surface mounting, if I'm doing smaller things, I might even put it lower. If I'm doing uh, just a bare connection to, you know, just cable to cable or cable to a connector that doesn't have any electronics, I'll just go all the way. Yeah. Whatever you have on the solder. And a good solder that can that has a lot of watts helps a lot because it, the moment you touch something, the temperature drops a lot. So when you have a good solder that's powerful, it's going to try and maintain as much much as you can with that temperature because the goal yeah, is again to do it as fast as you can but if your solder takes you know five seconds to heat up that place where you need to solder everything else around it's going to be hot as well right exactly so uh, you know the, the more powerful it is the better so let's do one of these smaller resistors uh, let's do you want to do this one? Yeah. All right, let's do this one. So we'll do the tiniest one. <coughs> now the tiniest one. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I thought that was a bug. <laughs> so this is a, as I said. There's no orientation, you said, right? No, on these, there's no orientation. This thing had orientation. This was important. Almost all of these, you see, there are dots in some corners, and that that is important. But you know, the inductor, the crystal, and all the, all the passives really. You can buy capacitors, electrolytic like capacitors that are surface mount, but they would show on the package. For example, one end would be uh, the, the the picture of it. It's going to be round on one side and square on the other. Right. So it, and the actual package is going to have that same bottom, so it's easy to align. It's hard to compute. These things, orientation is not important. So, yep, I know. <laughs> they're playing. Yeah, still there. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, so, that's like, like a speckled dust. Can you see it? Yeah. Um, Good. It's like a speckled dust. This thing over that here. That thing over there. Oh, it looks better when you lay it down. <laughs> and we see that's a little thing. He's got oh, yeah. to solder that. that little thing. Now, again, this is actually easier when you have tweezers. So it's easier when you have tweezers, obviously. But if you're really good. But we can do it without tweezers. And there are two ways to do it without tweezers. I just put some soft, some uh, rosin flux rosin here. And the more it dries, the stickier it becomes. So there are two things I can do. I can just get some of it, pick it up, and basically you need something to go in there. So I'm just going to use the corner of these uh, snips and you can just put it like this and put it down. It's not done. You're just kind of position it. positioning it. So we want to rail. This is really the the longest actually. Use a tip. Now. What happened is, I actually removed this resistor from another board, oh. and it already had some some uh, solder on it. So it's no, it's soldered. So now it, it's, it actually is, but it's not really a good connection. So, 
That's fine, actually. And we can remove and then mow in your yard. Make the content. Because it's so small, you can actually nudge it like this. So, let's see. One more time with the glass, please. Yeah, there's some here. I was going to try to make it into one. I don't know which one's got it. You actually moved that? With tweezers, it's so much easier. This one should be. And all you need is a tiny little amount. Just very quickly you need to touch it because otherwise, because this is so small, if you hold it too long, it's actually going to heat both sides through the resistor and you're going to lift it. So you just put a little bit of dot on it and touch. Up, see, there you go. <laughs> but you might have one that size. Yeah. The you fit it into something the size of well, I'm assuming you basically have <laughs> the transmission. So, again, this, I mean, this is really tiny. System. You probably don't need to do this, you don't need to know how to do this. And this is, as you see, it takes me a while to do it. Usually, 1206s are what you're gonna. I mean, when I make boards for myself, I use 1206. That's fairly easy. But that's a cute path to, to touch with, you know, with the with the solder iron. So a 1206 surface mount. How do you deal with multi-layer boards? It's basically you make a hole that goes halfway to the, to the layer you want to go. So you actually have to plate the inside of the hole to go. Yeah, down. they're called okay. vias, and usually. In so vias are internally plated, unlike in the old days where you just lay into it. <coughs> right, it's not like this. It's right. This, there's nothing in the middle. Oh, with the multi, the old multi layer boards had well, just layers all the way, and then the v, you didn't get to via. Well, it is layers, it's still layers all the way. However, you. Right, usually you have you know ground planes on top and sure. the bottom, or ground and power plane. Yeah. And then in the middle you might have some signal planes, mm -hmm. but you still have to get to those signal planes. Yeah, because your standard four layer board was ground power and two, okay. two, two connections. Right. right, so you make basically yeah. tiny vehicles yeah. yeah. halfway, just a small connection that goes halfway. So that's how you get to it. It, you actually can define also. Actually, the middle one. Oftentimes, the one they go all the way through because you can also open the test point like that. So when you go all the way through, you know the software makes sure that around the vehicle, no other planes are connected. Right. So even though the solder goes in there, exactly. it's got nowhere to win. Exactly. Yeah. So it, you know it's a good test point that right. way as well. You can do it this yeah, way. I used to work with four layer boards in the old days. Uh, yeah, well, so it's the same type of thing, basically. Exactly. 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 And it's easy with two layers because they're very cheap now. Really yeah. These things, yeah. five by five, uh, yeah. five by five, I think. These things are for twelve, yeah. like eleven dollars. Two weeks of delivery. Wow. They're so inexpensive. Wow, that's unreal. They're so expensive. So, you know, this thing costs yeah, like three bucks. Our own. <laughs> this thing is from single layers. You can so actually that's so expensive. Oh my god, yes. Of course, all things are. These things are, wow. as I said, five no. Ten boards usually you buy for ten dollars plus a couple of dollars shipping, and then they give you like a couple extra. Because what they do is be mistakes. What they do is they use professional manufacturing. And they use the extra on the size of the big pieces, and they put these layouts on the sides. So they use they use the extra, and that's how they manage to get this. Yeah. Right. So they basically use multi-project real estate. Right. Exactly. Wow. And uh, okay, so let, let me do one more of the these, and then you guys can take over. Uh, so let's do a let's, let's do this guy. 
This is oftentimes used for power supply relayers, like a three pin, like a three volt, three point three volt power supply. It takes five. It takes five and this outputs three, just a LDO power supply regulator rather. So there is a three pin, just one. This is a this is a I'm not sure if this one particular one it is, but you know this is a very common voltage regulator package. So it'll take five and output three and a half and it'll take twelve and output five. Obviously these are very low power, but you know they're very useful. And something like this could be like a, again ADC, could be an op amp, it could be many, many things. So let's let me do this guy. It's three and three. And, uh, he's fixing that and that's why that's where he's going to Now, again, if you look, there's a dot which shows the orientation. So that's important usually. Dot to dot. Right, so you do dot to dot. It's not really anything. But it's dead. This is what we do. We put one of these, like this, like this. Just cut it. And I'm going to show you the second way to do it, which is to put some solder on, on it. This one will transmit. And you quickly just go through all the chips. This and like this. So what, what I've done is, now there's a very little bit of solder on it, and I basically don't need any more. That's it. So now all I have to do is put the chip on top, and one problem when you do this is that they're actually a little rounded on top, so the chips tend to move around, but it's not a big deal. And once you do it, you once you line it up, like this, you really want to get just one pin first. That's, that's your hard part. So you find something to press with something that doesn't melt. <laughs> So we take one of these to help us in this case, and we just press it down, and we come in like this. Each pin? It's on one side, and you can do it if you go on each pin. It does seem easier than the regular, regular side. That's it. Let's test. Are there any bridges? Is there a, a surface mount equivalent of PGAs? Well, they are surface mount, right? By definition. Right, back in the old days, the PGAs were just pin grid arrays that went all the way through and you soldered them from the other side and then the device would go on. Now, it's the same equivalent to those. Same, but what they do is, let me just test this and I'll show you. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> we took it. <laughs> yeah, that was a test. You knew we were looking at Short, and let's see if there are any shorts. So I did these individually. No shorting here. And actually, one of these might actually sing because there are two ground pins. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Just get, uh, there you go. No right. shorts. Oh, so, okay. so the way usually it's done now in manufacturing is they will cut these stencil stencils. So what it happens is this is another, uh, what the green thing is here, but it's made of uh, material, so what they will lay